Welcome to our AMD Lucid Automation Testing channel. We will have a series of talk about Selenium Automation Testing, which will help you understand the basics of Selenium and also guide you to build your own Selenium Automation Project. You may access our test project and guide in the description below. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for any new videos and updates. Today, we will give an introduction about Selenium commands. Welcome. In last time's video, we showed how to create a before, test, and after. In the before method, we showed how to start a Chrome web browser, and we showed how to maximize the browser window. In the test method, we showed how to enter a browser URL. And finally, in the after method, we showed how we can close the browser after we are done testing. In today's video, we will show some Selenium commands. This video will be part one. For the sake of the video, I have commented out driver.quit so that it does not close the browser after we are done with our Selenium commands. To begin, we are using a different URL. This is uh, URL can be found in the description below. So we will first save our changes. And next, we will run it. So this is the URL that we are looking at. We will first focus on this first row. We will try to get each of these elements by their ID locators. Let us begin with button one. First, we will open up the browser on our URL and we will right click the button. We will then click inspect and we will see that it says the ID of the button is button one. Next, we can go back to our IntelliJ And we can try to find this button by its element. In particular, we will locate this button by its ID. So from the inspect function, we saw that the ID of this button one is button one. Next, we will do our first command is enabled. This command will show if the button is clickable or not. So we will save our changes. And we will run We see that our test has passed. The button is enabled. Next, we can ask Selenium to click the button. This time, we will use click. We will save our changes, and we will run it again. Mm -hmm. 
This time, after using click, the browser sends back a pop-up. If we want to close this pop-up, we must use another Selenium command to close this pop-up so we can test other features on the website. This time, we will use alert accept. This will accept any alerts provided by the browser. We will save and run it again. Now, we see that after the button has been clicked, the pop-up has closed and the button region is grayed out, notifying us that we have already tested this region. Moving on, we will show you how we are able to enter text into text boxes on a website. Okay. Next, we will show you how to enter text into a text box. First, before entering text into a text box, we must clear any text that may already be found in the text box. We can do this by using the clear function. Next, to add text into the text box, we use the send keys function. Here, we will send the text, hello, welcome. Note that if the text in the text box is not cleared, hello, welcome will be appended to the end of the text already found in the text box. In these two functions, we use the class name instead of the locator ID. To obtain the class name of the element, we simply go to the element of interest, we right click and we click inspect. Here you can see that the class name is text3, which we use here. Now we may save and run. We see that we added hello welcome into this text box. Next, we may enter text into a text area. First, like before, we must clear any elements that we might find in the text area by using the clear function. Following that, we may send any text elements we want to add into the text area using the send keys function again. Again, we will save and run. We see that this time we've added many different uh, long text into this text area. Okay, now sometimes we might be interested in the title of the page. This is because as we parse through a web page, we want to make sure that we are on the proper page. To do that, we can use the get title function. For the purpose to clear up the output, we will comment out the previous commands.
Now, we will run again. In our function, we specified that we would print it in our output. So, we can find the title of the page in the output near the end. As we see, we get the title here as AMD Lucid. Next, we will look at some other Selenium commands. First, we will work with checkboxes. What we will do is we will set a condition for if the checkbox is already checked, we will not do anything. If the checkbox is not checked, we will check it. So how do we do this? We will need to use an if-else statement. So what we do here in the if statement is we check if the checkbox is selected or not. If it is not selected, then we will check it. We will click it. If it is already selected, we will just simply print out the checkbox has been selected. So we can go ahead and run this. What we see happens is that our program has checked this checkbox. Now, what else we can do is we can change this condition so that if the checkbox is already selected, we can tell the program to click it again so that it is not selected. We can save our changes. and run this again. Now, we see that the program has unselected this checkbox. Now, what we will work with is buttons. We will write a program to check whether or not the text on a button matches the text that we are looking for. If it does match the text, we will click it. If it doesn't, then we will print out a statement saying that we cannot find the button. So in our if statement, we check if button one contains the text button one. And if it does, we tell it to click that button. If we cannot find a button that matches that description, we will print out could not find the button. For the sake of this, we will comment out the previous code that we have written. Now, we will save our changes and run it again. This time, we see that it has clicked the button. However, if we change this text to button two, what we expect is that there should be no button that matches this description. So let's see what happens. We will save and run it again. This time, we see that the program has not clicked any buttons. 
And if we go down to the console output, we see that we were not able to find the button. Next, we are going to work with text areas again. Previously, we used the send keys function to enter text into a text area. However, as the text gets longer, this function may respond very slowly. First, I will demonstrate what I mean. This is the send keys function that we used previously to enter text into a text area. The text that we'll be entering is this long uh, segment of text right here. We notice that the send keys function takes a little bit of time to load when sending the text. One way we can work around this is by using a JavaScript executor. Here, we define the JavaScript executor and we call the JavaScript executor below. Remember that since we are using the JavaScript executor, we must import it up here. This time, we see that when we run the JavaScript executor, it enters the text into the text area instantaneously. This is the advantage of using a JavaScript executor. Okay, now in the next video, we will talk about some more Selenium commands. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe and like this video. See you next time.